I'm Tim Jackson, Lead Development Engineer on the Puma Rally 1 programme here at M Sport. I'm just going to highlight a few of the um, changes with the regulations on the, the 2022 uh, Rally 1 cars. One of the big areas um, where the changes have been done is on the powertrain side of things. The internal combustion engine is the same as uh, in previous cars. The main reason behind this was to keep the development costs uh, down to an absolute uh, minimum for the, uh, for the existing manufacturers. But aside from that, the rest of the, the drivetrain is really quite different. We've now gone to a five-speed sequential um, transmission, uh, much more like the, the kind of Rally 2 um, style of things, much simpler technology, and as a result, much cheaper costs. There's no central diff on the car, and this was one of the big features for the, for the handling of the previous evolution of World Rally cars. But by removing this, and removing the paddle shift, we've been able to save the whole hydraulic system on the car. Again, saving the costs and reducing the, the complexity of the car. But one of the main things that, that has come, which is a, a massive difference, is the hybrid unit. This is the same unit for all of the teams. Uh, it's supplied by Compact Dynamics, uh, and everyone uses exactly the same, uh, the same unit. It adds around uh, 100 kilos to the overall weight of the car. This combined with the, uh, with the engine power uh, means that we have uh, around about 530 horsepower when everything's uh, at its maximum. So as you can see, I like the drivers quite like it when we've got plenty of grip. The hybrid unit itself uh, is driven through a separate uh, drive shaft into the rear differential. This is a Rally 2 differential that we're showing just for, for here today. The Rally 1 differentials will look quite different to, uh, to what you typically have seen on a, a previous World Rally car. As I mentioned, the, the hybrid unit itself um, can give out uh, 130 horsepower, uh, 100 kilowatts at its maximum. The motor and the battery are all combined in one single unit that's supplied to the teams. And on an event, each team will have uh, one entry and one spare unit per car. How the output is controlled uh, is down to the ECU software, um, which is up to the choice of the teams within the regulations. But effectively, um, the driver will demand a certain output by pressing the pedal. It's then up to the ECU to determine how much uh, hybrid power is available, how much engine power is available, and then send, uh, send the message to, to deliver the power from each of, of those. If, as you can imagine, um, whilst it can give out uh, 100 kilowatts, it's not able to do that consistently. So we don't have uh, that 530 horsepower all the time through the stage. It can kind of be thought of as an energy boost. So in order to explain how the system works, it's probably better to explain um, from the stage start. On the road section, the driver will charge the battery um, during regen uh, up to a maximum of 80% state of charge. Then all of the cars from the start line have the, have the full uh, 100 kilowatts available to them until they break for the first corner. So off every start line, uh, you'll get that full 530 horsepower. As you're then driving through the stage, as you can imagine, the battery state of charge goes down as you use the, the output. And in order to gain back another boost event, you need to do what's called a valid regen. And this is done by breaking a certain amount, uh, as you typically would go into a corner. If you can break that certain amount, do that certain amount of, of regeneration into the battery, you then earn another boost event. So that means the next time you go back on throttle at the corner exit, you have that boost from the hybrid available. The length of time that that hybrid boost is available um, does depend on, uh, on how hard the, the driver presses the pedal, you know, how much output they want from the, the car as a whole. And that's typically done depending on how much grip they feel that they have. On dry tarmac, you'll be able to get full power straight away. But then typically that power will last for a shorter period of time. And that's done because the energy um, that you have from a certain boost event is controlled by the FIA. The amount of energy in that boost event is dependent on the stage length. So for a very long stage, say 40 kilometers, you'll have a low amount of boost energy available per event than you will on a short super special stage. And this is really done so that it's fair for all of the teams and so that you're using the maximum battery capacity available over the duration of that stage. So whilst typically you may start the uh, stage with say 80% state of charge, it may be down at 30% state of charge when you finish the stage. So then you've completed that, that stage, you then do a road section to the next event 
and on that road section you'll do regeneration and which gets the battery back up to a state of charge ready to either start the next stage or to complete a section of, uh, of road mileage which may be done purely on the EV road. And that's one of the extra advantages of, of this, that the cars do have the ability to drive in pure EV mode. And so if there's certain sections in a town or city, um, then it's possible to drive a fully, the car fully emission free um, for around about five kilometer section. Each of the cars is gonna uh, be driving on the EV mode also when it's in the service park. As the car is into the service park and into the service bay, we'll then have one of the chargers available and which we can charge up the, the car effectively like a plug-in hybrid mode. So during the 30 minutes or, or 45 minutes of service, this charger is perfectly capable of getting the battery back up to the energy level needed to drive out of the service park in the EV mode and to go and do this road section uh, ahead of the next stage.